Ramadan is a month of the Quran. Start from now, my brothers and sisters, reading a verse a day, two verses a day, a page a day. Is it too much? No. Start off your day with a verse of the Quran. Your life will change. <clears throat> your sustenance will increase. The money you have will multiply. When you spend, there will still be a lot of change. Why? I start every day with the name of Allah and with the words of Allah and with prayer to Allah. Subhanallah. So Allah gives us a month. We're talking about it. I'm just talking about Ramadan. And look, the preparation for it, the run up to Ramadan. Let's cleanse ourselves because I don't know if I'm going to get there. But inshallah, if I make a good intention, oh Allah, let me witness Ramadan. I'm going to fast properly. I'm going to do all my salah, my Quran, my extra ibadah and so on. I want to do i'tikaf perhaps, which means to hold yourself within the masjid within the last 10 days or whatever days I'm going to manage. Oh Allah, accept it from me. I've made all these plans and intentions and guess what? I pass away before Ramadan. Allah says, we will write for you the full reward of whatever you intended in terms of goodness, all written. You pass away and all your Ramadan plans. But one thing you can't do, you can't plan to seek forgiveness in the future. You know what that means? I say, oh Allah, inshallah, when Ramadan starts, I'm going to seek forgiveness. For now, just leave me in the clubs. It doesn't work that way. That has to start now. You're seeking forgiveness, it must start today and it must continue into Ramadan. You can't plan to delay repentance to Allah. People say, and I've given this example before, people say, well, I'm still young. When I turn 50, I'll go for Hajj and inshallah, we'll stop everything. For now, I'm just enjoying life. No way. I've asked people, can you afford Hajj? They say, yes. Are you able to go? Yes. Well, why aren't you going? They say, because I'm still young. I'm still young. So I'm not going because when I go for Hajj, then I'm going to have to quit all this and all that. No, you can't do that. Allah decides when you're going to go by giving you the means and the capacity to go. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا Allah has made it compulsory to go for Hajj for those who are able and capable to undertake the journey. So if you have the capacity, who gave you the capacity? Allah. You have the money, who gave you the money? Allah. So He's decided when you're going to go, if you delay unnecessarily, you're sinful. Yes, if there was a restriction or you didn't get a visa or something, Allah will not hold it against you, but you tried. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. So this month of Ramadan that is about to come, let's become charitable from now. From now, we must be charitable. Learn to give a little bit. Why should I give today, for example, or tomorrow or within the coming weeks, run up to Ramadan? because of a few reasons. Number one, I don't know if I'm going to witness Ramadan. If there is a need right now, you've got five pounds in your pocket or a pound or a dollar, you can give it. There is a need right now, I've got the money. I don't need to wait for Ramadan when there is a pressing need. Subhanallah, you may give. You don't know if you're going to witness Ramadan, but if your calculations are happening in the month of Ramadan and that's how it works and so on, you already have an intention that inshallah, I'm going to sort all of this out. Allah will reward you for that too. I told the brothers from Abdullah Aid, so you know what, bring the buckets, bring whatever you want. Let's take them to the masjid and inshallah, everyone will give a pound or two or three, whatever they may give. And inshallah, we can all learn a good reward. And here I am encouraging you. So I'm going to get the biggest reward inshallah. You see? Give a pound. Is it going to affect the price of eggs in China? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. May Allah grant us goodness. My brothers, my sisters, this deen, this religion is so beautiful. It teaches us goodness, kindness, compassion, closeness to your maker, a very high level of morality, a beautiful level of character and conduct how to speak to people, how to talk to people. I, I, I challenge you to improve the way you speak to your family members.
I said parents earlier, but I want to tell you, the guys seated in front of me, if you're married, how you speak to your wife and the women who might listen to this, how you speak to your husband. Wallahi, it plays a big role in how much of the mercy of Allah descends upon you. Why do you want to swear? Why do you want to raise your voice and show that you are the boss when you're really not the boss? Allah is the boss. Subhanallah. Those who work for you or under you, how dare you speak to them in a derogatory way? Allah could have swapped that around a long time back and he might still do it. And then you have others who will do the same to you and you won't even manage. No matter how young you are or how old you are, speak to people with respect, be helpful. Be kind. I'm reading the Quran with the same tongue I'm swearing with. How? How can I read the Quran or do the dhikr and remembrance of Allah? Repeat Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Astaghfirullah, La ilaha illallah. On one hand and on the other hand, I'm swearing. What type of worship of Allah is that? I start off my salah by saying Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest and here I am thinking I'm the greatest. Astaghfirullah. Yes. Your children, your brothers and sisters and so on. Allah has placed them as your brothers and sisters. I told you the person sitting next to you well, is a creature of Allah. What about your family members? Allah made that connection. Did you decide, listen, I want this brother, this sister? You didn't. Allah gave you. Some of them might be very difficult to get along with. Some of them impossible to get along with. Maintain a distance if need be, but respectful distance. You don't need to become ugly about it. You see, sometimes it's very hard to have a relationship with a tough person, really difficult, toxic. I can't manage. I, it's just something so, so stressful. It's so taxing. Well, there's no harm in keeping a safe distance, but a respectful one. Keep your peace. This is all taqwa. It is all the consciousness of Allah developing the correct relationship with Allah. My salah is in order. My fasting is in order. My zakah is in order. We spoke about Hajj and we spoke about La ilaha illallah, worshiping Allah alone. And I remember mentioning sujood. When you go into sujood only and solely for Allah, we worship none other than Allah. These are the five pillars of Islam. We've spoken about them today in the run up to Ramadan in this beautiful masjid. I think it's called Six Kings or <laughs> it's called seven kings by the way okay i must have missed one well, who knows it could have been called eight kings maybe one was a queen but anyway so may allah grant us ease and goodness and open our doors and have mercy on us may allah give us all the reason to smile and to be happy on the day of judgment when our books will be given to us on the right side, on the right hand, inshallah. And my brothers and sisters, I want to say something interesting as I close. As I close, I want to say something interesting. And that is, all of us here are human beings. You need to constantly work on yourself. You have a temper, constantly work on it. You have a bad habit, constantly work on it. Remind yourself, admit that, you know what? I need to quit this bad habit and constantly work on it. If you fall, come back again. Promise Allah again. Many people are hooked onto looking at the wrong things on their phones without mentioning exactly what. But if you're hooked onto looking at the wrong things, you know what? The same eyes that Allah's blessed you with, the same eyes that Allah has given you. Imagine these eyes are such a great gift of Allah. If you were to study what the eye is all about, it's mind boggling. There's no point in looking at things that displease Allah because you're a human. You might have fallen or you may still fall. If that happens, just turn back to Allah, have hope in Allah, but don't let shaitan make you believe or make you think for a moment that you are outside of the mercy of Allah because Allah says, don't ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. If Allah says that, we all have hope. Ramadan is a month of forgiveness. And this is why that dua was destruction be or woe upon the one who witnesses the month of Ramadan and doesn't achieve forgiveness because Allah's giving the forgiveness. I need it. You need it. May Allah forgive us before Ramadan. May Allah bless every one of us. May Allah grant us ease.